Good afternoon, church. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. My name is George Richardson. I'm an elder here at Clearview, and uh, I'd like to talk to you this afternoon about Psalm 1. Oftentimes when we're talking to, to people about the Lord these days, you hear something like, there are lots of pathways to God. But we know, from the New Testament particularly, that there's only one way, and that way is through Jesus. But I think Psalm 1 also makes it clear that there is a right way and a wrong way to go through our lives. And so, I'd like to read the text and amplify it a little bit as we go along, and then see if we can draw some conclusions. So, stick with me. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Blessed is, a, is an interesting word. It means happy, it means content, but it also comes from a root word which means to go straight. And uh, we, might, we might imply that into the meaning of this text for ourselves as we go through it today. The, the man that is happy is the guy that's on the straight path. Man is a representative of a, of a group of people. It can be, blessed is the one, it could be translated that way. But who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Counsel, we all know what a counselor is, somebody that gives advice, somebody that's uh, trying to inform your life. But wicked is a, is a little bit different in the Hebrew understanding in the time that this was written. Wicked is a word that... Uh, would imply today evil, destructive, hateful. But in the Hebrew, the root word that this comes from had to do with departing from the path, which is interesting in the context of this psalm. And so the blessed man, the happy man, is one who doesn't walk in the counsel of one who has already departed from the path, nor stands in the way of sinners. The way is a pathway, is a pathway to a destination. And in this case, he doesn't stand in the, in the way, in the pathway that sinners go to. Nor does he sit in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers are people who make fun of people. They mimic people. They put down people if they disagree with them. And scoffers are not the kind of people that we want to sit with. Notice the progression here. The progression goes from walking, maybe even walking along the right path, but somebody on the wrong path is calling to you and trying to counsel you. Maybe somebody from the wrong path has come up on the right path and is trying to win your ear. But it progresses from walking along the path to standing in a path. More of an upright place, more of a position. Uh, much more set than, the, than listening to the counsel of somebody as you walk along. And then it progresses to sitting in the seat of scoffers. The, the word for, for seat could also be translated and often is in Scripture as a dwelling place, a much more permanent place. And so blessed is the man or the one who doesn't do any of these things. Listen to the counsel of one who has departed from the path, stand in the way that sinners uh, go, or sit in the seat, or dwell where scoffers are known to be. But notice, blessed or happy is the man, verse 2, who puts his delight in the law of the Lord. Law of the Lord is, uh, is interesting. The word for law is Torah. We understand the Torah to be the first five books of the, of the Bible, usually ascribed to Moses. But this word that's translated law here uh, is an interesting word, and it, and it has a lot more meaning for us than law. We often think, oh, here comes the law. It's a negative thing. It's a, it's a, a rule or a regulation that's imposed upon us by somebody in authority, and it usually has a penalty for breaking it. And we, we don't really like to have that imposed on us because we don't like authority in a lot of ways. But this particular word, Torah, has a, has a root uh, 
a verb from a verb that that really means uh, teaching. The ancient Hebrew lexicon always translates the word Torah as teachings. Teachings is a whole different concept than law or authority or rules that have a penalty. Teachings are, are much more uh, informative to us and we can <clears throat> and we can relate to them a lot better. It also <clears throat> uh, has, has in its root uh, the idea of casting or throwing, and it works its way out in, in Hebrew idiom in some interesting ways. For instance, rain, the word that we trans, the, the phrase that we translate into rain, would be throwing of water. The, the word that we would use to, to describe shooting, like shooting an arrow, would be to throw an arrow and to point would be the throwing of a finger. And so that idiom, same word, the root word that we have for Torah, has built into it the idea of pointing or throwing in, in a direction and the word teaching. And so I, you know, I've often glibly heard people, particularly Jesus followers, say we're free from the law. And it's a little bit proud and a little bit arrogant when we say that kind of thing. But for me, if we can understand Torah or law as being the teachings of the Lord, as it says here in the text, and he's pointing us in the direction that we ought to go, I want to be under that. And I think we all ought to want to be under that. The word delight here is, uh, is a powerful word also. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Delight is a, is, is a willful uh, bending or turning in the direction of acquiring something that you really want to have. And in that sense where we are delighting in the law of the Lord, where we're bending our will to, to acquire the teachings of the Lord and looking at the direction that he's pointing us in, I think we, we really want to ascribe to that. And on his law, he meditates day and night. The Blessed One meditates day and night on the Lord's law, the Lord's teachings, the Lord's direction pointing. We, we all have an idea, I think, of what meditate means. Some people would say stew on, some people would say chew on, kind of brings up the thought of a, of a cow chewing down something, bringing it back up, chewing it again, getting all the nutrients out of it. We think about that. but. Meditate really means to take a thought, take a teaching of the Lord and to twist it around in the light and look at it from many different directions, to ponder it. How do I apply it to my life? That's meditation. And here, you know, we, it says that we do it day and night. The word for, for day, uh, for a 24-hour day in Hebrew is Yom. We think of Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Day of Fasting and Prayer and prayer, which is 24 hours long, and then a celebration. But this word is yoman, and it's always translated or always refers to the, to the light part of day. And so we're not being, we're not being taught here to, to stay up day and night and think about or meditate on the law of the Lord, but on the waking hours, in the daylight, it ought to be always on our mind. And so we have two ways described here. One, the way of wicked sinners and scoffers. The other of the blessed man who delights in the teachings and the direction of the Lord and meditates on those. And what happens to that guy? Well, verse 3, that guy is like a tree. Like a tree planted by streams of water. Also in that, maybe a secondary translation for the word planted would be transplanted. I kind of like that. If we can use that word transplanted, I like the, the thought that God has taken me from an unfavorable place to grow and transplanted me to a favorable place to grow, where he brings streams of water. And the word for streams is a, is a side stream, like an irrigation ditch for, for this particular tree. And that kind of excites me because God is making 
a person who is doing these things, delighting in the teachings of Jesus, of, in this particular case, Yahweh, and plants him like a tree. Now, what is a tree? In, in the Hebrew mind, a tree was a, a rooted pillar that supported leaves and fruit. It was an active thing, rooted in the ground, a strong pillar of a trunk, strong branches. The root, the root of those words are used in things like, like backbone or spine or bones, support, support beams for something more important. The trunk of the tree and the branches support the leaves and the fruit. And it says here that this tree, transplanted by streams of water, yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Fruitful, growing in, a, in an environment that is healthy and productive, and the shade leaves don't wither. My backyard looks like fall right now. Because of the lack of water, the trees in our, back, in our backyard are losing their leaves. They have been deprived of water. And some of them are dying. Some of them will barely hang on. But in this case, this tree has its own irrigation ditch. And it's being, it's being tended by Yahweh. And notice the last phrase here. In all that he does, he prospers. The end of these two paths, the crooked path that, that contains sinners, wicked, and scoffers, is a crooked path that leads to death and judgment, isolation, confusion, hateful experiences. And sinners, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Two roads, a straight road that leads to being established as strong as a tree, yielding good fruit, providing shade, that won't wither away, or the road that leads to isolation, separation, destruction, and ultimately death. So what does that leave us with? Many of you I know have been on the straight path for a long time. You are bearing fruit. You are solid in your faith. So what can you do today? You can be a positive influence. You can take the fruit of that experience and you can give encouragement, counsel, share your wisdom, give of the experiences that you have. Spend time with people who are less fortunate in trouble today. And there are lots of them and there are lots of opportunities. I encourage you to do that. For those uh, of us who, or you, I guess, I'm, I'm one of those people that's been on the path quite a while, but if you're new to this path, then what do you do? Well, I encourage you to, t to bend your will toward the, toward the teachings and the direction of the Lord. To be intentional. To seek those things. To meditate on those things. And to grow and eventually be a tree of life for your family, for your friends, for your community. If you're wandering off the straight path, what do you do? Well, then I encourage you to remember the goodness of the Lord, to seek a mentor, to seek a tree of a counselor who bears fruit, and bend your will back to the straight path. And then there may be somebody out there that is just plain so far down the crooked path that you don't even know where you are that you're lost, that you know you're in a bad place and you don't know what to do. I encourage you to call for help. Yahweh, the God of the uh, ancient Jews, Jesus Christ, the shepherd of the sheep today, are always seeking the lost. They will always answer a call for help and they will bring you to a place where you can see the straight path. And if you will it, you can get on it. So the straight path leads to life. The crooked path ultimately leads to death. Which path are you on? 
I encourage us all to answer that question for ourselves. Thanks for being with us today. Have a great day, the great rest of the week. See you on Sunday.